All right, brethren, let's turn to John chapter 14. We'll ask the Lord's blessing on the message before we begin. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you that you continue to keep your people and bless us, keep us looking to Christ. Lord, we ask you to meet with us here this morning and if we don't have your presence and your power, all is for nothing. Lord, make the word speak to our heart. Make us hear and believe and obey you by this gospel that goes forth in power. Thank you, Lord, for each brother and sister here. We pray, Father, you'd be pleased today. Call out one of your lost sheep. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for our blessed Redeemer. It's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Now, John 14, <clears throat> our Lord had been comforting his disciples, and he told them to let not their heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. He gave that promise of the dwelling places that he's prepared for his people. And then he makes this statement in verse 4. He says, And whether I go, where I'm going, you know, and the way you know. After the cross, he was going to the cross, and after the cross, he would ascend to the Father. He would go to the Father. And the only way you and I come to the Father is through faith in Christ. So we know he had told them the way. He, they knew the way. He said, the way you know, he told them. But Thomas and the others didn't understand. They didn't understand our Lord. He had told them he was going to the cross, that he would suffer, that he would be buried, that he'd rise again, that he would ascend to the Father. But they just didn't, they didn't understand him and they didn't believe him. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, he said, he said, where I go, you know, and the way you know. John 14, 5, Thomas saith to him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thomas asked, he said, Lord, how can we know the way? How can we know the way? And the Lord answered, I am the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Our, our subject is the way. The way. I was going to I have another message prepared for next hour, but I think I'm going to preach both messages today from this passage rather than trying to, to rush. I want to. I want to go slow, look up some scriptures. and So our subject is the way. Now, in order to go from one place to another, we need a way. We need a path. We need a road to go from one place to another. And in order to come to God the Father, we need to come God's way. We can only come God's way. If we're going to find acceptance with God, if we're going to be received into heaven, we can only come the way God has provided, God's way. Christ declares, I am the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the I am. He's the great I am. He is the Son of God. And he is the way. He is the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That's, that's clear, isn't it? That's clear. That's a, that's a plain statement. He is the way. No man comes to the Father but by him. Now, why must Christ be the way? Why must Christ be the way? Why has God given his son to be the way? Because we sinned in Adam. And sin and death passed upon us. We became guilty in Adam and we were conceived in sin. And we came forth from a mother's womb sinners. And that's what we will be in our sin nature till we die. Till we die. And God's holy. God is holy. Now these two things can't they can't have they can't have communion. God's holy and we're sinners. God cannot have communion with a sinner. 
He can't receive a sinner. He's holy. He's holy. He, 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 it has to be perfect to be accepted of God. We have to be made the righteousness of God. We have to be made the holiness of God. We have to have no sin. Our God cannot receive us. That's why Christ is the way. He's going to manifest all God's holy character in the salvation of his people in his son. So he's the way. Before sin entered, Adam had communion with God. Before sin entered, he was upright and he had communion with God. He had direct access to God. But when sin entered, he lost that access to God. Sin blocked the way. Sin barricaded the way. And God put a flaming sword at the entrance of the garden to keep the way so that there was no way. That's signifying there's no way to come to God but by his way, by Christ. By Christ. Isaiah 59, 2 says, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So our sin and God's holiness is the reason Christ is the way. God's holy, we're sinners. So we have to come God's way, and Christ is the way. Now, I want to look at some ways Christ is the way. Christ is the way. First of all, the Lord Jesus Christ is the ordained way. He's the appointed way, appointed way, appointed by the Father from the, before the world was made. Before God created anything, there was an eternal counsel in, in, in eternity. There was no earth, no heaven, nothing made. There, and God had an eternal counsel, an eternal counsel. And... It was in this council that he, he first manifest his sovereign grace. He chose his son to be the way. He chose his son to be the way. You know Proverbs 8.23 is speaking of wisdom. Wisdom is personified, and that wisdom is Christ. That's what 1 Corinthians 1 tells us. He is the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. And wisdom speaks. Christ speaks. And he says in Proverbs 8, 23, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. God ordained him to be the way. And, and this, you think about him being wisdom. And then think about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 7. We speak the wisdom of God. We preach Christ in crucified, the wisdom of God. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That's hidden wisdom is Christ ordained before the world was made. He said, I was set up from everlasting. Look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, where Peter's here telling us that we're not redeemed by corruptible things but by the precious blood of Christ. And look what he says in verse 20. 1 Peter 1, 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God. You know, the Hebrew writer said that Christ didn't glorify himself to be made a high priest. He didn't take that honor upon himself to be a high priest. And likewise, he didn't, he didn't thrust himself into this position of being the way. But what does the scripture say? He who said to him, you are my son, today I've gotten you. He made him the way. He ordained him to be the way. God the Father did. He ordained him to be the way for a specific people. He chose a people by his grace. Christ is going to be the way of salvation. He's got to be the way of salvation for somebody. And he was the way from eternity. That means God chose somebody from eternity. And he chose a people by his grace. Those for whom Christ became the surety. Christ said, I'll pay everything they owe. I will provide everything that's required for them. I will bring them to you, holy, spotless, without blame. I will do this work. He became surety for his people before the world was made. He entered covenant to redeem us and to reveal himself to us. God set everything in order. He put it all in order. Ordered in all things in sure by putting it in Christ's hands before he ever made the first grain of sand. 
according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And because he, he chose us in Christ, that's how God has always viewed his people. Before, even before we fell, he viewed us in Christ holy and without blame before him in love. And he always will see his people that way. So the first thing is our Lord Jesus is the ordained way. He's the appointed way, appointed of God. Now, seeing that God the Father chose his Son to be the way, therefore the Lord Jesus is the one and only way. He's the one and only way. You see the definite article, Christ said, I am the way. He then said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. There are not many ways to God. There are not many ways to God. There's only one way to come to the Father, and that's Christ. Now, sinners, since the fall, have sought out many inventions. You think about, think about what it is, what it's called that we do in our mind. It's called the imagination. Think about what that word is. It's an image creator. <laughs> that word has image in it. It's an imagination. We, we're creating images in our polluted, corrupt mind. And we, we create and imagine idle gods and idle ways to come to God. There's a way that seems right to man, but they all end in death. They all end in death because... The reason they end in death is no matter what religion it is and no matter what denomination in the Christian religion, if it's some other religion or even if it goes under the heading of Christianity, no matter the denomination under that heading, those who coming another way are all the same. They're all coming by the works and merit of of the sinner. There's something involved in every religion in this world that's false that involves the sinner having to do something to make himself accepted of God. There's only two religions, the God of Cain and that of Abel. There's the only two. The only two. Man's way is the way of Cain. Cain came with the fruit of the cursed ground. And anytime we're trying by our will or by our works or by some imagined merit in us, to, to be accepted of God, we're coming with the dead fruit of our cursed flesh, the, this cursed ground, this dust. That's what we're coming with, and God will not receive it. It comes short of the glory of, of God, and so it will end in death. It will always end in death. But Christ has been the one way from the beginning, and every sin, sinner God's ever saved has been saved by this one way. He's the one and only way. Adam and Eve are the first, first ones. Who was it that came to Adam and Eve? Who came after they sinned and fell and they tried to cover themselves with their fig leaves and they hid in the trees? Who came to them? There's only one mediator between God and men, Christ Jesus. This was the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus that came to them, the Son of God, the triune God in Christ came to them and called them out of the trees and brought them to confess their sin. And he provided a, an innocent lamb to die in their stead, picturing the justice of God poured out on Christ in the place of his people. And not only did he provide that lamb to satisfy justice in type and picture, he also took the coats of those skins and covered them, picturing Christ's righteousness imputed to those that he brings to believe on him. So the next we see is Abel. Abel. Abel came with the blood of a lamb. And he was saved this one and only way. Christ the way. All the prophets throughout the scriptures all spoke of Christ the way. They all were declaring Christ is the only way. All the apostles were all saved this one way by Christ. And every sinner that's ever been saved from the beginning right up to the very last one God saves will have all been saved this one and only way. No man cometh to the Father but by me, Christ said, but by me. There's only one cure for sin. Only one. 
Christ is that cure. There's only one righteousness God will accept. Christ is that righteousness. There's only, there's only uh, one way we can be just with God. That's by Christ fulfilling the law on behalf of his people. There's only one faith, and that one faith is, the, is, is given of God and lays hold upon this one object, this one way, Christ Jesus the Lord. There's this one gospel we set forth, and that one gospel is declaring what Christ says here. He is the way. I am the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So, he's the appointed way, ordained of God, and he's the only way, the one and only way. Now, thirdly, our Lord Jesus Christ is the new and living way. He's the new and living way. Now, he's, like we saw, he's been the same way from eternity. But in our comprehension and in our, from our point of view, he makes us see he's the new and living way. That old covenant pictured the way. But it was, it was, it was dead, if you will. It wasn't a living way. And that old covenant was not a living way. Christ is the new and living way. Our Lord Jesus, when he took flesh, became a man, he, he, John said, behold the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb of God. And when he went to the garden, he, he's going to the garden like, the, like they would bring that spotless lamb. And he's presenting himself to the Father. That's his holy obedience, to submit to the Father's will. And he went there and he submitted to the Father's will. That, that's Adam disobeyed God in the garden and plunged us into sin. Christ obeyed the Father in the garden. He went there and submitted to the Father to do what he promised to do. And God our Father laid on him the iniquity of all his people. He hath made him sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And you know what happened to the lamb once the sins were ceremonially in type and picture put on the lamb? The lamb was slain. And our Lord Jesus Christ, in obedience to the Father, went to the cross. He went to the cross, and there God poured out the justice of God on our Redeemer in the room instead of his people. He poured out wrath on him, wrath that we would have deserved. You look to that cross, and, and you, see, you see hell on that cross because hell is going to be God taking the restraints off of men. And so they can gnash on you with their teeth. They can do whatever comes into their heart, whatever they, they want to do. And that's what de the devil and his seed did to our Lord Jesus on the cross. And, and, and it's, it's God removing his presence, God removing the glory of his presence. And, and, and Christ endured that alone, crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That justice that his people would have had to bore. And then when he accomplished this, you remember when he said it's finished, what happened? That veil rent from the top all the way to the bottom. That thick veil rent from the top to the bottom. The top to the bottom. And our Lord Jesus Christ, 40 years later, he ascended to the Father. And when you see him ascending to the Father... Here's, here's how it was pictured. That high priest going by himself with the blood of a lamb into that holy place in that tabernacle. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ was doing. Turn over with me to uh, Hebrews 9. He's the new and the living way. Hebrews 9, verse 12. Well, let's read verse 11. Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of that old covenant building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Look over at Hebrews 10 and look at verse 12. Hebrews 10 verse 12. This man... 
after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And when the Spirit of God bears witness in the, in the heart he's made and writes this gospel, this good news on our hearts, and he, and he teaches us that Christ has remitted our sins, and where remission of sins is, there's no more offering for sin. Here's the good news that he teaches us in verse 19, Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. What? In the old covenant, no child of Israel could enter that holiest of holies. But now God says you can enter. How? By the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. He's that way. And he consecrated this way for us through the veil. And he's not talking about that fabric cloth that hung in the tabernacle. He's talking about his flesh. He consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. He's the, he's the new way. He's the living way. He is a man the God-man who laid down his life for his people. And through his flesh, through his blood, he made this new way into God's presence by satisfying justice, by making us righteous, by, by reconciling us to God. And so having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's when... When the Lord has worked this work in our heart and made us see what Christ accomplished and made us see the new and living way, that's when old things pass away and all things become new. Those old vain imaginations with all our idols we had of how God saves and, and what we'd always been told and, and the lies that we, we latched on to that gave us some glory in this thing, all those old imaginations, all those old ways pass away. Our Lord Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. Now we see the new and living way. Now we behold Christ, the new and living way, and we enter, we enter by his blood alone through our high priest, through our high priest. So the Lord Jesus is the ordained way. The Lord Jesus is the one and only way to the Father, and the Lord Jesus is the new and living way to the Father. This is how God's people Come to the Father. The only way we can come to God is by Christ. He said, I am the way. I am the way. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But by me. I want to stop right here. And I want to come back in the second hour. And we'll pick up right here. And look at the rest of this. And uh, so we'll just... We'll just have a little longer break this morning. Let's go to the Lord. <clears throat> our Father, we thank you for this word. We pray you bless it to our hearts. We pray that you would give us grace to, to really trust Christ is our way, our acceptance, the one in whom you're pleased with, that you will receive us in him and him alone. Lord, we do pray that your word will go forth wherever it's preached this morning in power and that you will cause all your people to rejoice and be strengthened in faith and comforted by your grace in Christ. And we pray, Lord, that wherever the gospel goes forth today, that you would be pleased to, to make it speak into the heart of one of your children and bring them to Christ, translate them into this way even if it's for the first time, we pray that. And Lord, keep us, we ask you, keep us in the way. We depend upon you. We, we are so easily beset and so easily distracted and so easily complicate things. Hey, keep us looking to Christ only. Keep us following him. Thank you again, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the blessings we have in Christ. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.